for more on this, so we are now being joined by Colin Strong Yu Keat. He's joining us live from Kuala Lumpur. Mr. Keat is a China expert in foreign affairs and security strategist at the University of Malaya. Thank you so much for joining us, and we on, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon from Malaysia. Right, sir. Now, we've been talking about how China's exports have dropped over the last two five-year periods. What is the cause of this massive decline? Well, it's an open secret that the uh, capacities of Chinese military assets, including weapons and arms, have been uh, not as comparable as to Western assets. As we have seen now the case of growing number of countries realizing the uh, you know, the, the, the weaknesses in terms of, you know, they are not being combat ready, they are not being combat tested, and that uh, they, are, they remain of low quality. And of course, also the after sales processes in terms of maintenance, in terms of the operability. And it's, it, now it has, it has been, uh, you know, proven and that a uh, great number of countries have also been wary. They have received, you know, these kind of weapons that are not really capable of maintaining their defense uh, capacities. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, of course, China uses this as a pre Tax in the first phase of selling these weapons based based on the, uh, uh, of course, the, the pricing factor as compared to their Western counterparts. But as in the case of the BRI, for example, a lot of countries have been, you know, they have been, uh, you know, bought by these pre perceptions of this addictive short-term reliance on based on pricing factor. And now that they have realized the, uh, the, the weaknesses of these assets and, and capacities. And of course, we have seen different factors involved as to how Beijing has used this defense diplomacy, arms exports and all that as a tool to complement its existing efforts of using economic coercion and hard power intimidation on countries. And now that we have seen how the, the, the beginning of the Chinese economic decline has strengthened Beijing's other play card in bolstering its grip on the global south by, provide, by providing this security dependence and lifeline to these countries and as a tool to ensure that their foreign policy options are still being dictated by Beijing and that of course also using this as an advantage of uh, you know having this fewer strings attached as, as compared to Western uh, security uh, you know assurances. Of Absolutely course mistaken. he has been seizing on this vacuum where Western countries are refraining to provide arms exports to these countries and that China is happy to fill the gap but then now they're at the expense of right. their own security capacities. Yes, Mr. Key, just to add to that, that China has openly uh, been exporting weapons to conflict-stricken regions around the world, to name some Africa and West Asia. And now with the countries, like you also mentioned, that they are now returning back the weapons because they've realized the weaknesses of the Chinese uh, weapons. What options do these countries have on the table at the moment? Of course, they, they have the greater options of pivoting back to the assurances of the West. And of course, China has been using this as a great bargaining chip and card to ensure that these countries remain under the periphery of Chinese defense diplomacy. Mm -hmm. And that we have seen how he has maintained these arms exports to countries which Beijing thinks will be of great asset to Beijing in the long run in terms of having these countries to provide these uh, additional, you know, um, tensions or you know, conf future confrontations with Beijing's adversaries. In the case of Pakistan, for example, we have seen how it receives the biggest share of arms export from Beijing. Okay. And that knowing that providing arms to these countries, including Myanmar, also having these returns in terms of providing, uh, you know, this enhanced bulwark of uh, defense capacities against uh, traditional um, you know, adversaries of China, including India and, and Japan, for example. So, so these are the tools that Beijing has been capitalizing upon. And that we have seen also how, uh, apart from exporting arms, Beijing has also used the uh, advantage and pretext of exporting also its security contractors to countries including, of course, Cambodia, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand. Uh, you know, using that as a pretext to secure its current infrastructure, uh, you know, capacities or infrastructure, um, you know, assets in those countries, and using that advantage now to have greater or deeper access to neighboring countries. So these are the the, uh, the bargaining chips and cards now using this as a tool apart from its economic coercion. Now that Beijing knows. With its current economic decline, countries have been realizing the the you know the, the risks involved, and that uh, Beijing has Beijing is now being squeezed by by a declining time frame, and that it knows that having to bolster its defense diplomacy and to use this arms export and arms security lifeline assurances apart That's from its economic lifeline assurances to these to these countries. So this is right. um, a great strategy by Beijing to ensure that it can maintain its supremacy in 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 a two prong factor. 
Right, Mr. Keita, thank you so much for joining us on Burn and sharing your detailed analysis on this story. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.